Well, China appears to be friendly to African states. Our president here has also indicated that China is our friend. Probably they could think about that. Don't you think it's prob a, a, pro a possibility that uh, China can actually forgive us? It depends. Sometimes you don't want to open up a gate. You, if you put yourself in the seat of China, if you do it for Uganda, then you must do it for Zambia, you must do it for Sri Lanka, you must do it for every other third world or developing country that you have lent to. So they may want not to set a precedent. I don't know how what conversation they can have, but I wouldn't mind making a brief for President Museven and President Jinping to have a conversation on that issue and see if that can be done. If that can be done, well and good. But as of now, the point is ah, it is not going to be a very easy way to walk through that door and come up with the, the result that you need. Right. Your final advice to the government on this particular issue as we go for the break? I think final advice, let's not take this as a normal situation. We cannot just keep borrowing because there are money lenders out there. Now they have actually, as we pattern with them, they have become money lenders because as you borrow more, the profile of your lenders deteriorates into, as I've said, people who would not even be willing to, to negotiate, but also you deteriorate into people who are going to be lending you labor plus, which is a market rate at the global level, which might now be in the range of 5 to 6 percent, and you can see you're borrowing for 10 to 12 years instead of what the World Bank would gladly give you, a 0.75 of a percent for 38 years, 6 to 10 years of grace. That kind of lending is now going out. So we need to look back and say, much as we can still borrow, these loans are committing us for the next 10, 15, 20, and 30 years. What will it be like? Is there anything else we can do to avoid the borrowing? That conversation should start, and I think should be seriously upheld within the circles of government. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Fred Mhumza, there for your insight. We go for a break now. When we return, we'll hear from Dr. Julius Mukunda. He is from a Civil Society uh, Budget Advocacy Group, as we also look at the views that are coming in uh, from you, the listeners. Do send them in using our WhatsApp line, which is 0703-090-090. Spectrum continues after this break. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. Welcome back to Spectrum, coming to you live on Radio 1 FM 90, live on our website, www.radio1fm90.com. You click on the icon with the word Listen Live, live on the different radio listening apps. We are also live on the SCV audio channel 897. We are live on Star Times audio channel 97. Today, we are discussing the current economic situation amid its escalating uh, debt burden that uh, we are facing as a country. We now owe our debtors 80 trillion shillings. Uh, those debtors are here in Uganda and also abroad. I have been speaking to Dr. Fred Mhumza, Senior economy, Economist, also Director of the Economic Forum at Makere Business uh, School. He has an engagement that uh, he has to attend to. But we are now joined on the line by Mr. Julius Mukunda, Policy Analyst, also Executive Director at the Uganda Civil Society Budget Advocacy Group. Welcome to Spectrum, Mr. Mukunda. Thank you. Good evening, listeners. Good evening, uh, Kenneth. All right. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, let me read out a, a, a letter, a, a request mm -hmm. that was actually sent out by the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, uh, Honorable Matia Kasaija, on the 7th of November. He says, the Ministry is pleased to inform you that the government of Uganda is in the process of mobilizing resources externally of up to Euro 500 million to finance the budget for the financial year 2022-2023. This financing will offset the equivalent of the net domestic uh, financing requirement that was approved for the financial year 2022-2023. Government is therefore seeking financial pertinence to structure medium-term and long-term financing using all available financing options, excluding the euro bond option. The terms are as follows. Amount euro 500 million, a minimum of 10 years tenure, competitive interest margin, grace period of not less than 48 months, that is four years, disbursement, single or disbursement tranche, uh, repayment, semi-annual, and then uh, a number of other issues. And this letter is directed to uh, potential um, lenders out there, and they are all requested to express their interest before close of uh, business on the 18th of this uh, month. Uh, Mr. Mukunda, you are among the budget specialists in this country. What exactly has gone wrong with the budget? And 
do you approve of what the government of Uganda is trying to do uh, to get more resources towards the 2022-2023 national budget? Thanks, uh, thanks, Kenneth. Uh, I mean, the first of all is that uh, this, conver this conversation, I think we have had it for quite some time. And the unique about it is that we've learned that that's how government uh, raises resources. In fact, if I was government, on the first day of July, I would be able to advertise and say the government of Uganda intended to raise, to raise this amount of money to finance its budget. Because the budget is very clear. You have a budget of 48 trillion, you can only raise 25 trillion. And the balance was supposed to be borrowed. Even the parliament, myself and you know that we have a shortfall in terms of the revenues we are going to collect and the amount of money we are going to spend on. Therefore, there is that amount of money, around 19 trillion, to be borrowed. If you offset, if you offset uh, uh, domestic refinancing of 8 trillion, you probably remain in something. Uh, uh, something like 11 trillion. So we needed to, to borrow that money. So I don't think the, the ministry uh, really has, uh, I mean, was doing anything outside of raising money because you, you must be out there and say, guys, I need I need money. I'm also aware that there are these loan sharks so around the Ministry of Finance all the time. Please, I have money. Can I, can I lend you some? So probably it's because it is coming a time when we are debating this. But this kind of raising, I think, he probably have been doing for quite some time. But I think the gist of the matter, uh, Kenneth, is the quality of the loan and what we are borrowing for. Those are very critical. The moment we started spending more than what we can raise, we are here because we took that decision. Therefore, we should waste most of our time debating the quality of the loan how it will cost us, those terms we have been reading, and what we are going to spend on. And I think Dr. Momoza brought it very clear. You cannot borrow to pay for salaries, for heaven's sake. There you are in, you will never get out of this particular debt trap. So I would expect that for me at this particular moment is what we are borrowing for. That's the number one. Number two is, considering the situation we are in at this particular moment, that our businesses are not running very well, that the, the, the economy, the, the crises uh, are coming one after the other, would it be the right time to be putting ourselves, borrowing much more money than, uh, borrowing more? My question is, we might not avoid borrowing, sincerely, but we can avoid a number, we can, we can borrow less than what we want. Why? Because where we are spending money, there are items we can stop spending money on and be able to faster reinstate re ourselves back to normality before we can go for these borrowings. And one of those key particular elements for me is the cost of running government. It is too, too, too expensive considering the kind of economy that we are having. For heaven's sake, we spend more than 50% of our budget on wage and non-wage. Running government, almost more than 50% of what we collect goes to wage and non-wage. And these are some of the things that are like not to, not to bring returns or to be able to bring economic growth. Uh, very, very, uh, very, very quickly. So as such, that's, that's, that's number one. And number two area, of course, is we have this whole debate about classified expenditure. I think it's high time we get into classified expenditure because it has continued to grow. It is now more than $4 trillion. At what point do we need to sit down and ask ourselves, what exactly are we spending on that requires all this amount of money as a government. Because these are tight uh, days whereby you need to be very frugal that every shilling must be able to be counted.
Well, and that, I think for me that we need to look before, at before, the be, be, borrowing. Before you move out of that particular area of uh, classified expenditure, Mr. Mukunda, you, you've been for long following the budget process in Uganda, and I think you're familiar with some of the areas that received a classified expenditure. I mean, we, we, I mean, we know State House receives classified expenditure. And part of it goes to the Minister of Defense. We know now that police also receives some of the classified expenditure. Uh, we, we have also been hiring arguments that whistleblowers also require, if you are a whistleblower, that IGG also wanted the, a classified expenditure. So the meaning of what Karaspenda is supposed to be has widened and everybody is tapping into it. We believe that it is an area that is currently being abused in terms of payment that we need to begin to open it up and be able to understand what actually should constitute a classified expenditure and what is supposed not to constitute a Karaspenda. In any case, a Karaspenda is of about, about 4 trillion Ugandan shillings. Me and you, let me tell you, it is too huge for our small budget that we have. Because remember, classified expenditure is so difficult to be financed by these, by these uh, debts. Most of it actually might, it comes from our domestic resources. So I believe we needed to make sure that uh, we have a very proper accountability of classified expenditure, and I think we can get some savings that can go into other areas that we need to, uh, to invest in. Thank you. All right, we have, we have some comments that are coming in from uh, the listeners. The kind of monies we borrowed, if they were used properly to do the intended purpose, things could be different, but corruption takes it and aversion from the original plan leading us to where we are. Now, 80 trillion shillings loan burden on us, yet we don't see much value. That is Okelo Patrick Bonyo uh, from Busega. Well, we have another comment that comes in. says, uh, thanks so much for your analysis. You are the only economist... I'm left with that can dissect issues the way how they are. Many, many blessings to you, Dr. Muhumza. Um, that is a comment which was directed to Dr. Muhumza there. Unfortunately, he had to leave us for another uh, commitment. Mubanza Hagai writes in, he says, thank you for the great show. I believe our financial problems are systematic. To fix this in the long term, we need to treat financial literacy like a language. Our understanding of how money works and grows in Uganda is broken on at an individual level and institutional level. A lot of misappropriation starts from our households. We Ugandans need to be educated on how to respect money and how to grow it. That's a comment there uh, that comes in from Mwanza Hagai listening in uh, to this uh, particular program. Then we have a comment uh, Somebody rising and his Moses listening in from Kampala says, since the, the debt burden has now gone high, I would suggest they postpone infrastructure developments by remaining seven months as we reduce on the current uh, debt. That's a comment there. Then we have uh, another comment that comes in from Benjamin Rugamba, who is listening in from Bu Buambo. Thank you very much for always being on. He says, hi, Spectrum. What do you expect in a country without uh, a governor? Uh, or he says, without a, a governor, uh, that is the governor of Bank of Uganda. Well, those are some of the comments that are coming in, uh, Mr. Mkunda. But let me just ask you some questions that were that are, were put across to uh, Dr. Mhumoza. Looking at where we are, uh, what kind of advice would you give? But you can also respond to some of the comments that have been put across by the listener. I, I think the advice... <laughs> The advice is a very bitter, really. It, 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 there are some painful decisions we need to make as a government. And uh, I, uh, my challenge is that I'm not seeing a person who is likely to, uh, to, 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 to do that. Uh, first of all is we, we need uh, to speed up rationalization, speed it up, because we are really, it's a hemorrhage. It's, it, it, the, the leakage is, is just too much in, of, of these particular agencies. And I've given an example recently. I'm saying you can't have public service commission. You can't have health service commission. You can't have uh, education service commission. You can't have prison service commission. All of these commissions are recruiting civil servants of different areas. All these are still different agencies doing, uh, the agencies doing the same work. So for me, you, we need to do it as quickly 
as possible. The second element we need to make is to be very hard on corruption. And the chart, unfortunately, that of recent, we have now put on very soft gloves on fighting corruption. Why do I say this? You cannot steal government resources. And the best thing the government can do to you is to bring you on the table to negotiate on how you will pay back the money. Where have you seen that happening? You have a case of this PDM cash resources, PDM money that was stolen in Kitugumu, in Kaware, you know, everywhere. IGG has written an AMOU with the thieves that to, to work out a payment schedule. Go to the corruption case that was unearthed by Monitor in the Ministry of Agriculture. An AMOU was written on how people are going to fund back the money. I think for me, is you don't need an MOU to recover the money. The only thing is you need to recover the money first, but also get some, that person in prison. If you don't do that, everybody's going to risk to steal government resources. If you get them, they pay back. If you don't get them, well, then it's good luck on their part. So we are sending a very, very wrong signal for people to get tempted to steal public resources. So if we can get strict on that, we can get better returns to our money. Lastly, for me, is on the issue of our capacity to absorb money and implement projects on time. Right now, even the loans we are getting, we have $5.5 billion of undisbursed loans. The loans we signed for, but we are unable to use them because we lack the capacity to absorb all the money we contracted. In fact, I'm asking myself, if we are failing to absorb this money that already contracted, what capacity do we have right now that even the loans we are contracting now, we are likely to utilize all these, uh, all these loans? So if we don't work on that, then we shall stay in this particular, particular area. But also I think uh, mo mo most, most importantly is, uh, is to ensure uh, that we don't have any leakages uh, in, this, in, this in, in these resources. That leakages, you, 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 you know, they were talking about an insurance rate of 10% of the loan you are going to get. That is a leakage. Insurance, you can never have an insurance of a loan of more than of more than three percent. It is usually very low. But when a loan comes with an insurance of ten percent, that begins to raise some 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 some, some, some problems. So it's, it's very important that the government realize at this particular moment it becomes a bit more frugal. And uh, and I mean I think something I just was coming to mind is what what the other part is what I, what uh, one of our, our listeners mentioned, and I think this is very important. We should stop, at this particular moment, we need to stop thinking of starting new projects. This is not a time for new projects. This is not a time to start constructing new bridges, new roads, new hospitals, new schools. No, no, no. This is the time to maintain the already existing ones. Because we know potholes are up. Again, we need to fix them. We know that schools are falling, that we need to provide some, some maintenance costs. The water points, we know they are clogged. We need to provide operation and maintenance. So that once we put a stop on that, then and deal with the current challenges, then we shall have, to have enough fiscal space for us in the near future, maybe to start looking for more resources again. Thank you. All right. I know very well we are already planning for the next financial year through the budget uh, because the, the processes begin as early as September. When you look into that process and what is happening to the Ugandan economy now and looking forward, are you confident that we are planning to deal with the challenges that we are facing today? Because that's the only way, uh, some people have said, that we can counter the problem and probably um, deal with the potential threat uh, that has already started happening in other countries and the anticipated slowdown of the world economy. What is your take on what you have seen so far in the plans that are being made? I mean, the, one of the things I've seen which is good is that the government in, does not intend to increase, to increase the budget because, I mean, there is no money to, to finance a new budget increment. If they can stick to that, I think they're better. In fact, I would have loved that they are reducing the budget uh, for the next financial year because the minister in the last statement at the budget strategy meeting said 
uh, the resources are going to remain the same. Uh, I think that's first way, uh, one of the, the first things I think they should be able to do, not to increase the budget, because we don't have money where to put it. Well, Mr. Mukunda, uh, if, you, if you say so, are you suggesting that we just budget for the sake of it, or we budget to deal with uh, the challenges that the country faces, including service delivery? If you say they cannot increase the budget, does that mean that probably some areas are going to remain unfunded, what we normally say, the unfunded priorities? I mean, I, I think we should, the best thing is not to increase the budget. We should remain with the status quo. If you have not been funded this, this financial year, stay like that. Even next financial year, don't start finding new, new, uh, new, 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 new items. Don't do that. Because bringing on new items on the budget, you are increasing the spending pressures. And the moment you increase the spending pressures, then we start borrowing again. And now me and you shall be on this, on, in this space talking about how government intends to borrow uh, more resources for the purchase spending pressures. So that is very key and, and also very important, that the government should not increase the budget because the current revenue we have is not financing even half of, of what we, what, what, what we, uh, we have. The, the other important element, I think, uh, government is, is intended to, to plan not to have more of domestic borrowing. And you, you remember what I've been talking about. Please, can you go to London and New York and look for these monies, but not on the Kampara Street? Because this is where the private sector is, on the Kampara Street. And the more money, the more the government gets more money from Kampara Street, the more interest rates are also increasing. And it becomes expensive for the private sector to get loans for, from, these, uh, from, these, from these banks. The current rent, loan rates are above 25%. Who is going to make profits out of that? But the government has capacity. You can see for it. It has capacity... Even tell people to, to, to get loans below, you know, below 5% per, per annum. So we, we, we really believe that uh, if they could stick to rest domestic borrowing, it could definitely help to boost, to boost the, uh, the particular private sector that we are, we are that they, they can boost the, the private sector. And I think that is very important if we want to boost this particular economy. There is a question you asked about, I think, which is very interesting. What would an ordinary person do in these current circumstances? Yeah. And, 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 and the kind of, I think we talked about this, I remember, in terms of how would the, an ordinary person benefit or get affected by this government decision, especially by our own. And I remember telling Uganda that as I said, please tighten your abilities. Things are, going to, things are not going to get simpler. Things are going to get harder. If you expected the government to pay for school fees for your child, it's high time you begin to save your life and start paying school fees. If you think government is going to put more medicine in the hospital, maybe more medicine are likely to reduce. So I, I think it's time to have less reliance on the government because there is too much in terms of what they have, they have to do before they think of us. Remember, the first call on the budget are loans, to pay back the loans. The second call, you go to wages. The third call, statutory payments before they buy medicines and they pay for school fees and also have more water points among the, among the, among the citizens. So I, I think for me as Uganda is to, 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 to work, not to, to have our mind not focused on what the government is going to do for you, but what you're going to do for yourself. But I think we also need to be very vigilant because really if people begin eating our money, in broad daylight, we need to begin to expose this kind of rot so that people who take our money are reprimanded and punished very severely. Thank you. Well, there's one point you made, and unfortunately I didn't follow up with the question. You, you talked about loans that are not performing. Uh, are you privy to some information uh, where loans are not performing? Because in the past we were told actually some of uh, the projects are normally delayed for a few people to actually use this money uh, elsewhere, what some people will call Okuozamu in Luganda, local dialects. They send this money somewhere, make a quick gain, and then delay the process. Uh, some people actually thought that, that had ended with uh, the single treasury account system. You know, it's, we are, it's not only about being private information. One thing that the Minister of Finance has done is actually to put all this information out there on the public. So if you're interested in a particular subject, you just get into the website and you'll find this particular information. We, we, know, for example, we know that, I mean, some projects are really behind the schedule. 
check the check the MPG Busega Express Highway. This road was supposed to have finished last year, but I don't think even 10 kilometers have been done. We are we are still probably below 10 percent, and it is a loan that was supposed to 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 have to we should have paid paid on. So there are more of those. Look at the the the, the Northern bypass. It took 20 years for us to finish it. A project which are possible within five years. So, but what does this tell us? It tells us that three things: one, our capacity. We we construct a road even when we are not ready for it. Mm. That, 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 that and that's our biggest problem. All right. And and I think that's where I can we can link it to what you are talking about. Is that why would we sign a contract if? A, a loan contract. If you are not ready to start running at a go, All right. maybe you have an interest in that particular project. All right. Let me thank you so much, uh, Mr. Julius Mukunda, for making time to share your views with us about the current economic situation amid this the escalating debt burden. Let me also thank Dr. Fred Muhumuza and the listeners for chipping in with their views. Uh, to sustain this discussion. I've been your host, Kenneth Lukwago. Up next, the news in English with Josephine Dagano. Thereafter, the Soul Train with B.B. Junior. Cell is